my talk is going to link the next and final two chain from here. Um, small overview over the presentation. I'm going to introduce Ernst Minkel. I uh, talk a bit about the architecture. I'll uh, uh, give some performance numbers on how how well it does compared to the existing alternatives. Um, there's a uh, status report on how well it works at the moment and some uh, future work for one, whenever someone finds time to finish it. So, short introduction. Uh, LLVM uh, do the machine code layer sometimes two or three years ago, um, which allows it to directly create object files without an intermediate assembler. Uh, this means uh, for supported platforms, um, Clang can compile directly from source code to uh, binary object files without calling any external process. And um, the biggest missing part for this um, was uh, the lack of a linker component. So you can uh, now take uh, this object files and mix them together and um, have no external dependency on uh, the new tool sheet. The MC Linker um, code base uh, was created by uh, Luba Tang from MediaTek uh, in 2011. Uh, that's, that's still pretty young. And uh, it's under the same ESP license as the rest of the LPM. So the high level view on uh, MC Linker. <coughs> There is an uh, input tree to describe uh, basically what the command line is. From that, it's going to build a fragments reference graph. I'm going into detail uh, in a bit. Uh, it's deciding uh, where to put individual sections in memory. And we locate uh, the code as necessary and finally writing the output. Uh, if you compare this with new LD, the uh, classic uh, linker on uh, most uh, BSD systems and Linux, uh, it, it's going to mess up the three parts. Um, it kind of has an uh, iterative approach where it uh, oh, I still need the symbol and goes back to, uh, well, I guess I have to pick up some more object files and or some other libraries, and uh, it, it's no, it has no clear separation between them. And it really shows in the code base, uh, makes it hard to understand, makes it hard to debug, and it also affects performance. We'll come back to that later. Uh, there's a new linker in uh, Binutrix, which is uh, Google Gold for the linker. And uh, it has a much cleaner architecture by uh, separating the first two parts, but it still uh, merges um, uh, some things that shouldn't be uh, merged, uh, so it's less clean. Mm -hmm. So the first important part is building the input tree. Uh, basically, we want to have an intermediate representation of what our input is, what we have to work with. Um, so we are starting from the command line and whatever is on the file system. Because you can't interpret uh, the command line uh, without knowing what is on the file system. Uh, because, for example, uh, if you reference a library, uh, you need to search for it. And, um, you don't know in advance whether you are going to find a shared library or only a linker archive and uh, for what specific architecture and so on. There are some uh, complications here. Um, the linker command line is actually um, position sensitive. Um, for example, options like as needed or the uh, whole archive um, effect um, later uh, until they are disabled again. 
and um, there's some nesting uh, possible here. Um, for example, uh, linker archives contain object files, so you um, have to apply all options that affect this uh, linker archive to the individual members, and um, you have to uh, keep track of uh, the fact that you are uh, currently processing the linker archive uh, because it acts as a implicit loop. Uh, the, the objects in our input tree are tagged. Um, there are object files, linker archives, shared libraries as uh, different object types. So from this input input graph, we want to build our fragments of reference graph. Uh, the goal here is to do a similar resolution. So we have a graph where um, the sections from uh, the individual object files are basically the nodes. And whenever um, there's a symbol inside uh, one of those sections, we create a reference to uh, the section that defines it, or um, a special reference to the undefined uh, object uh, if we don't know, know where this comes from. Uh, we, now go, we now go over the input tree and uh, search for files that can uh, help us to fulfill uh, missing symbol dependencies. Um, when we find an object file, um, it may either be requested by the user explicitly, in which case we always uh, include it, or it might um, help us uh, with our goal, that is, uh, it might uh, provide a, a symbol we are looking for, and in that case we also include it. If we include an object file, we read the section table and the symbol table and add the store graph. Um, when we have linker groups, um, it gets a bit more tricky. Uh, in that case, we need a stack um, where we save uh, the start of the position. And the behavior is now uh, we continue processing inside this group. And uh, if there's any new undefined reference, um, Added, uh, we continue the cycle inside the group until no new uh, undefined references are added. Once, once that happens, we, we pop back uh, the last um, element from the stack and continue uh, with the rest of the graph. What we want to do here is uh, optimize for uh, capital quality. So, um, this is really important for the performance. Um, we are going to uh, process the symbol table a lot. So it's uh, very critical uh, that as much of the symbol table uh, fits into the processor cache. And for that purpose, um, we are using a special layout where um, the critical symbol attributes, like the visibility, the type, and so on, and uh, the initial part of the name are uh, on the same cache line on modern architectures. Uh, so uh, any access to the symbol uh, hopefully uh, it doesn't need to go to the main memory. And if it has to go to the main memory, uh, the data we really care about um, is going to um, be pulled in in one go. The next part is the layout phase. Um, here we decide uh, which sections we want to uh, write out in uh, which order. Uh, sometimes you have to merge sections. Uh, for example, uh, we have two different uh, files defining uh, code. Both have a text se a section and they need to go into one big uh, text segment uh, in the final output. It's also possible that we uh, drop some sections. Uh, this can happen uh, because they are not referenced um, or because they have uh, special semantics that uh, only one defini definition is used here. This happens, for example, in C++ code a lot. When you have an uh, inline definition, 
definition of function or, uh, for example, uh, a virtual table for an object, uh, you only want to have the virtual table once uh, in your final output and not in every single file that just got the input for this. So, um, this um, exceptions are duplicated a lot and uh, we only want to keep uh, one uh, definition, so we need to get rid of the other ones. Um, at this part, uh, we also decide what uh, values the symbols have. This can either be a fixed um, absolute memory address or it can be uh, relative to the, to the start of some uh, section. And um, doing the, the layout step last um, and not um, iterative, for example, like, like Noel means uh, we can avoid a lot of uh, computations um, to be done twice because, uh, well, something invalidated the data and uh, we have to do everything again. The other important part is um, doing it at this late point means uh, we can do it as a single uh, pass for ordering and for the address assignment. So, becomes a really simple code and also performs very well. After we know uh, where uh, the, the code and the, uh, the data ends up and therefore the simple values, uh, we can compute the relocation entries. So basically uh, we look at each relocation and check uh, well this is a symbol we defined and if it's a symbol we defined um, we can uh, check, uh, do we know the value at any time? Or do we still need, for example, a relative relocation at one time? And uh, depending on that, uh, the final relocation is decided. Uh, sometimes we can use uh, a sim simpler versions uh, of a relocation, for example, for threat local storage. Uh, if we know uh, this is the main binary, we don't have to do the full dynamic version of uh, TLS access. We can uh, adjust the code to uh, use a more simpler version here. Um, the, on some architectures, there's a problem that uh, you can only encode um, constants in a similar with a very small uh, range, for example, ARM or Spark, uh, uh, something like 24-bit, uh, you can trace in an uh, immediate constant. So these architectures uh, generally have so-called constant islands. That is, if you have a function, uh, you are placing uh, the actual pointers um, below or above uh, the function and load them with small relative offsets. And uh, at the uh, final link time, uh, we might be able to tell, well, well, you are going to call print f, but I know print f is at this place and uh, it will fit within uh, the 24 bit uh, immediate. So I can just uh, drop the, the immediate constant and directly go to the correct location. Once all this, this is done, um, we just have to write the final binding. So we'll uh, go over our uh, relocation tables and our input sections and uh, merge the result and write it to this. Uh, there's some uh, additional uh, file form specific data to add, for example, ELF has the uh, segment headers and uh, the symbol tables and so on. Of course, all this is also um, needed to be uh, mixed in. In this stage, we want to use uh, memory mapping uh, aggressively because it helps uh, your operating system both uh, to increase uh, BFS cache usage, but also uh, it makes it possible to um, use uh, uh, TLB caches of the CPU more efficiently. So again, this uh, improves this, uh, page locality. A small look at the uh, performance. I'm taking two differently sized uh, binaries. 
One is a uh, table gen um, helper program from LLVM. The second one is uh, the pen uh, compiler itself. And I'm going to compare Google LD, Google Gold, and MC Linker. So, what can be seen is uh, MC Linker is clearly superior in performance uh, to Google LD. It's still somewhat slower than uh, Gold. We are investigating why. Uh, MC Linker hasn't been uh, optimized very aggressively yet uh, in the uh, low level part. So quite possible there's a lot of gains there. And what is also interesting uh, is that the memory usage, which is yes, is larger um, for MC Linker compared to uh, the new LED for large binaries. Uh, well, that's also easy to understand. It has to build a, a global uh, symbol table first. And of course, uh, you might can throw, throw away quite a bit of data um, in the intermediate steps and uh, sometimes it has to recreate them but uh, it helps to keep a somewhat smaller memory footprint. On the other hand, uh, it pays a lot for that in terms of uh, computation time so I feel it's a good deal. And uh, MC Linker is a bit smaller in terms of memory linking compared to gold. That's good. Uh, so we'll see uh, how it will end in the future. Uh, it's also interesting to check the output size. Normally you would expect uh, binaries created by different linkers to be more or less the same size. Uh, this isn't the case. Um, one reason is uh, the different ordering. Another reason is um, because uh, this is C++. Uh, you can sometimes drop different parts more aggressively. Uh, on the first look, uh, it seems to be quite bad. <laughs> and I mean, uh, MC Linker uh, creates like um, eight megabytes larger output. Uh, but surprisingly, uh, in terms of uh, the, da the data and uh, uninitialized data segment, uh, it's actually better. So, um, what's going on here? Uh, took, it took a bit of uh, analysis, but well, the first part is um, MC Linker at the moment doesn't strip uh, unnecessary items from uh, the um, symbol table. And more importantly, it doesn't strip them uh, from the uh, dynamic symbol table. So it behaves uh, as if you ask it to uh, export all symbols for dynamic usage. This is like uh, one megabyte of difference. The rest of the difference is um, primarily in the only data section. Um, there's some semantic when when you have two strings uh, in your program and your program doesn't depend on uh, the specific location of the string, the, linker, the compiler and the linker are allowed to merge them. So for example, if you um, have the string foo and the string bar foo, uh, it's uh, valid to um, include only the bar foo uh, string and points the uh, uh, foo string um, uh, three characters after the start uh, of that string. And for C++ code that can make quite a difference be because um, there are a lot of uh, automated uh, assertions and so on uh, that now are uh, stored redundantly. Uh, this is an optimization that has simply not been implemented yet. So I picked a uh, slightly different example, which is uh, the CC1 binary from uh, JCC45. This is C code, and um, because I don't have a native goal in the uh, NetBSD tool chain, uh, I can only compare to um, uh, LD. Uh, the new LD. The link time difference is somewhat uh, smaller here, uh, because um, uh, C code is um, 
less demanding uh, on the linker. And uh, the, most, the most important part is uh, the code size is actually quite a bit smaller. So um, if those optimizations uh, from the last section are uh, correctly applied, uh, we can expect uh, the result to be uh, quite different. I'm not sure yet why uh, the MC linker output is twice 84, uh, 48 more bytes uh, for the data function. That's a surprising number. Uh, I'm not sure yet. So, Let's take a look at uh, the implementation status. Um, the basic L functionality is fully implemented. That means uh, static linking, dynamic linking, position independent, uh, executables all work. Uh, partial linking uh, exists. Um, there are some issues with symbol stripping uh, in that case, or uh, we have uh, disabled it again. But um, we can use um, L minus R. Um, the L visibility rules um, are fully implemented and symbol binding as well. Uh, this is especially important for C code, uh, otherwise, it wouldn't work well. Uh, the DT needle tag, uh, which basically says, um, Okay, I have this uh, shared library and it needs the following other shared libraries to work. Um, normal elf semantics says um, a symbol defined in any of the dependents uh, on uh, libraries is also visible um, if you link with the main library. This doesn't work yet. Um, actually, uh, the big neutrals folk decided to mess up um, uh, F semantics and screw them, and they are now as bad as MC linker is um, if you pick a model enough LD. <laughs> On I386 and AM64, I have um, everything um, in the next one, like an FBSD tree to do a full release build. There is a bit more fallout because there's no support for um, a symbol. Uh, for linkers, but yet. Uh, for those cases, I'm falling back to new LD. Um, actually, uh, the parser is about to be merged, so uh, this will be fixed soon. And the TLS support is a bit incomplete uh, because not all of the relaxations uh, are applied yet, and this means some of the uh, test cases in FBST that uh, actually uh, check if this happens are uh, failing. ARM um, is a bit more involved. Um, the release build works as well. There are a few more hacks needed uh, than on RX86. And uh, the biggest problem I have so far is that uh, a dynamic optimized libc uh, doesn't work completely. There are some parts that fail uh, when accessing uh, local symbols. I'm still analyzing this and um, hopefully this will be fixed soon. Uh, the same um, problems for TLS support uh, apply as for x86. There are some problems with the uh, um, header flex uh, when it comes to interoperability with new LD because new LD uh, insists that uh, Things like um, the floating point support is tagged inside every object file and every shared library, and uh, it cries if it doesn't see the flags it wants to. Um, the system linker is uh, now officially included in Android, but still optional. And there's no support for the 64 bit um, uh, backend yet. Uh, given that, there's, that there are no real devices out there that do this, uh, it's not that. Uh, NIPS uh, is completely untested from FBSD so far. Um, it is usable for Android, so hopefully it won't be as much work. Uh, there's no support yet for the 64 API space. Mm -hmm. 
So what we have to do? Uh, not much. <laughs> uh, we really need to start on having an extensive uh, test tool to make sure um, future changes uh, won't result in hard to debug uh, problems. Uh, single versioning is definitely needed. It's much less critical for NetBSD than it is for FreeBSD uh, because the only uh, object we have at the moment that depends on single version is the GCC itself and that's more or less optional. <laughs> uh, Linker scripts I already mentioned, this is active uh, work in progress and uh, the biggest item for uh, support and downloads. There's a uh, link time optimization to be integrated. Um, it's most likely just a few days of work if you know the LLVM side of things, but no one has done it yet. Um, some possible research in this area is uh, what is the effect of uh, having a very fine granular um, input. So basically, um, when you make every function a separate segment and uh, depend on the compiler to uh, merge them and place them correctly, how does it uh, change both the performance of the compiler and uh, the quality of the resulting code? Um, there are a number of optimizations uh, still needed for the exception handling tables, like uh, dropping redundant entries. Uh, this is something other linkers uh, should also uh, work on. Uh, when I first tried to test uh, exception handling, uh, I looked at the GNU uh, LD output and uh, uh, this doesn't make sense. It has uh, overlapping entries in a table that definitely uh, shouldn't have uh, any overlaps. And uh, so this is also uh, something to spend time on. Um, well, and for the individual uh, platforms, uh, there's some production left on x86 and ARM, as well as MIPS. And of course, new backends like uh, the 32-bit uh, AMD64 ABI or uh, the 64-bit MIPS ABI. Hexagon um, is also quite popular nowadays. Telera might be useful in the future and so on. What about RBC? Hmm? What about RBC? Um, it shouldn't be that difficult. It just needs someone uh, to sit down and watch. But it's not there yet. It's not there yet. Uh, primary reason for that is uh, there's no Android support for RBC. And that's what uh, MediaTek is primarily interested in. So. <laughs> For Android policy. <laughs> um, a few useful links. Uh, the first is uh, the project homepage. And uh, you can find Spark Tracker and mailing list and so on from there. And if you're interested in going uh, into the details, a lot more than I did for this presentation, uh, check out the uh, tutorial at the CGO um, conference a few weeks ago. And uh, they have a very useful slides for that. To end my presentation, a short thank you to a uh, number of companies that uh, either provide development time or uh, money for development time or other resources. Uh, MediaTek, of course, uh, was the original author and uh, still employs the main uh, developers. Uh, Google uh, provided a lot of support uh, because they are also interested in the Android platform. Uh, Intel, Wix, Qualcomm are all interested in helping the uh, support for the corresponding architectures and provided the help with that.